What's up, Weirlings? It's time for another character creation video. And since we're starting the new Heroes of Awesome campaign, Rusted Heart, what better way to have a character creation video than to create the new characters in the adventure? And this one is actually really cool because we get to introduce the newest member of the Heroes of Awesome, Kelsey. Hi! Well, I was about to say say hi, Kelsey, but you, you, I did, beat you, to it. you did the thing. Kelsey, hey, Kelsey, tell us a little bit. My name is Kelsey Summers. I live here in Austin. I'm an actress. I'm 26 years old. I've been playing D&D for about two years. Got started with uh, some of my friends in college. Um, but that was after I had graduated, so we didn't live in the same city. So I've never done a campaign before. It's always been one-shots because we've never lived in the same city. So this will be my first campaign, distracted by the cat, which will be very exciting but also has me slightly nervous. Really? A little. I don't know what's going to be different. Uh, you know, not much is going to be different other than the fact that it's just a lot longer. As opposed to like a couple of hours. I mean, what are we on? We're on episode 52 at two to four hours yes. a thing. Yeah. I, that was very long. So the character development is much more oh, yeah. in depth. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which Absolutely. is exciting and something that should be right up my alley. But I've never done it before. The unknown can be intimidating. It can. And very exhilarating. And Xander is very excited, but Xander's going away right now. No, away, Xander. He'll come back. When we started talking, almost the first time we met, you already had an idea for a character in mind. Tell us about your character. Yes, so I had been thinking uh, for a while about a different character that I wanted to play. I wanted to play something that was unique, something that I hadn't seen anyone else play in my circle of friends before. I also wanted something that wasn't human-ish, essentially something that wasn't um, in Lord of the Rings. Fair. So I started looking around, asking some of my friends, and someone suggested a tabaxi, or tabaxi, depending on... You don't know. If you have an opinion, feedback, comments. I was like, well, I want to play a tabaxi, because that sounds really cool, it sounds like fun. And the main thing that drew me to them was... Um, this very, very inquisitive nature that they have. Basically, I was looking at cats, and I was like, I really like the personality of cats. It would be a lot of fun to play a character that shares a lot of those personality traits. So something that um, is fairly self-oriented, does what they want whenever they want, um, a character that doesn't really have a moral code as far as like law or lawless, doesn't really matter, um, that is driven above... Um, everything else driven by curiosity, which I absolutely adored. I thought that would be really cool. And then something that has fun little quirks and habits and ticks, like, I don't know, the tendency to fall asleep in warm places. I don't know. I love that. I really hope that happens at some point. I mean, I have, it's definitely an option. You go to a tavern and there's a fire, you'll be trying to talk to me and you look over and I'm just asleep. Sleep on the front of the fire, as you do. Naturally. So what's the name of your character? Her name is Sinedra. I should write that down. I should write that down. Oh. Sinedra. 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 Um, but she has a last name because Tabaxi, Tabaxi, they come from clans. And so her last name is Woodstream because um, they typically get their last names from some sort of characteristic near where they live. So she lived near a stream in the woods. Wow. Let's uh, go ahead. We've, we've got the basic information down, so we're going to go ahead and build this character pretty much from scratch. We already met and went through all of this. We're going to go through all the decisions. I do want to let you know, we're going through the instructions pretty much straight out of the player's handbook. I also want to let you know, this is not a min-max situation. If you're looking to maximize all your skills and get the most power, that's not really what we're doing. This is more of a character build. I've got a character like. Here's my character based around that. Make sense? Yeah, I mean, being an actress, I'm very, very character oriented. So uh, there was actually opportunities. I remember we were talking about certain things and you were throwing out certain suggestions that would be cool, that would maybe give me an ability I didn't already have. And I was like, oh, that's a good idea, but that's just not something she would do. Which I love. So I, love. I didn't. Um, so there was definitely some opportunities that were missed, but... I think that it worked out. Yeah, I'm not going to call it a missed opportunity. <laughs> I think it's going to be great. Seriously. Mm. Diving in, straight from the book, the first thing that they tell you to do is they tell you to pick a race. You've already picked the race, Tabaxi, Tabaxi. Mm. We're going to go with Tabaxi. Tabaxi? For the rest I can of do that. Great. Because saying it twice is annoying. annoying. So with Tabaxi, there are a couple of things. They get a plus 
two dexterity modifiers. They do. Oh, this is a nice pen. I just refilled them. It's really nice. Isn't that good? Yeah. Anyway. They also get a plus one charisma modifier. Their speed's 30 feet. That's not as nice of a pen. You disappoint me, Green. You also have dark vision. I do. Yes. Which, which is fun. For those of you who've been watching, the only dark vision we've had so far has been drought. You don't have to be a drought to have dark vision anymore. You got a tabaxi. You also have a proficiency in perception and stealth. Yes. So we're going to fill in that bad boy for perception and stealth, which kind of makes sense. I mean, it's right. Cat. Cats have instincts, which I thought was. I mean, that made sense to me. And then, of yeah. course, they're all stealthy. They sneak up on you and terrify you in the night. There's another cool ability I really like with Tabaxi. They call it feline agility. You call it speed burst. I call it speed burst because if I think of feline agility, this is not what I think of. So, yeah, speed burst is this cool feature where basically you can take double the movement um, at any given point. But there's a catch. As with life, there is always a catch. You cannot use it again until you take zero for your movement. Which is very cat-like. Right, to just like run and then freeze. And then run. And then run again. It is mostly cat. Like cat. I love it. I like to imagine that she's like 70% cat. 30%. 30% whatever else. Human-ish. We've already figured out the boxy. Why are you going to do that? So that's awesome. The next thing we need to figure out is the class. What class did you pick? So kind of going with the whole cat theme, I had this image of like the cat doing that like thing that cats do before they pounce. I was like, well, I'm going to definitely run with that, and I'm going to have her be a rogue, someone who is sneaky, who would be very likely to pounce on a person. Um, and I also thought that that went along with her curiosity. Um, I, I envision her being a character that is, like I said, completely driven by her curiosity. Her desire to know is above everything else. So I wanted her to have a lot of options for how to get the information that she's looking for, whether it's sneaking away in the night and stealing something or whether it's talking someone into giving her that information. And a rogue had a lot of the traits that I think that she would have tried to hone. The uh, hit dice for a rogue is a D8. The hit dice is how you figure out how much damage you can actually take. So for a rogue, it's going to be a D8. Put that right there. We'll figure that stuff out later because there's other stuff to do first. You also have a proficiency in dexterity and intelligence. From being a rogue. There are four more you get for being a rogue, but we're going to hold off on those until we actually talk about your background. So you get some okay. proficiencies from your background as yes. well. Yes. And your background is what? Noble. I chose a background of nobility. Interesting. Yes. So I wanted to make her a little bit more complex of a character because as much fun as it is to have a cat, um, that's not fun to play over a long period of time. So I wanted to give her a little bit more depth. So I decided to make her, um, since she's from a faraway land, I decided to make her a noble. Um, but her family has all passed away through a tragedy that may or may not be revealed later. She's conflicted about whether or not to go back, but there is privilege that comes with being a noble, and she can't deny it. She can, however, choose to pursue her curiosity rather than go back and pick up the job, or she can take what she's learned from her curiosity and go back and be better at her job. These are her options. What will she choose? I don't actually know. <laughs> Guess we'll find out. I'm not sure. <laughs> So for the noble background, you're going to get a proficiency in history and persuasion. persuasion. You also get four more proficiencies in a rogue. What did you pick for your four additional proficiencies? Yes, so I chose acrobatic. Acrobatics. So I thought that could be very cat-like because, I mean, I've seen, look at, after this, go click on a different cat video. There's lots of acrobatic cats. Um, athletics. Athletics. Again, I thought might be useful for trying to perform fabulous cat feats. Um, let's see, what else did I choose? Uh, sleight of hand. Sleight of hand. I know I did. And I did one more, which I had to have done. I believe it was insight. Was it insight? Yes. Insight. It was insight. Because I kind of wanted to go, the insight went with the perception. I wanted like that cat instinct sure to be fully developed yeah yeah. you know that thing like an animal knows when a tornado is coming or an yeah. animal knows when someone is bad i like it i wanted her to be able to have that instinct there you go makes sense xander bing see like he knows that this is where the entertaining things are happening so he wants to be a part of it he has now, an instinct well you know what this means buddy it means i'm gonna have to take you upstairs to your mom no it's true come on buddy 
So for those of you who may be new to building characters in D&D, the proficiencies are important because as you play the game, you get additional bonuses when you try to do something you're proficient in. So this is actually a really important choice on what you're going to be. It completely defines what your character is like. And what they can successfully get away with. She's not wrong. <laughs> Even then, I've done plenty of things I'm proficient in. Not so, <laughs> okay, it's we're not an doing off that. day. Ooh. There are a couple other things about rogues that I really like, and probably the most powerful thing about a rogue, maybe, is the sneak attack. Yes, the sneak attack. I imagine the sneak attack is going to be very advantageous. Yeah. So a sneak attack is um, essentially, for those of you who don't know, at any given point, um, I can deal out extra damage to somebody if I have the advantage on them or if an ally of mine is within five feet of that enemy. It's huge. The sneak attack is... Probably, if you're not using a sneak attack playing a rogue, you're not playing a rogue correctly. I'm going to say that right now. There's another cool thing that I really like is the cunning action. Which, again, this is a thing that if you're playing rogue, if you're not using the cunning action all the time, you're probably doing something wrong. Yeah, so a cutting action, again, for those of you who don't know, super useful is basically you get your bonus action, um, which you can use that to hide or disengage or dash away from your enemy. It's huge. Nice to not get attacked after you've attacked somebody. Yeah, you can just run in. Chop, jab, chop, jab, chop, jab. Run away. Or, in my case, of a cat. You. Claw, claw, claw. Claw, claw, claw. Because cats have claws. It's a thing. That's what they have. Let's talk about the archetype. Because we went through and we did an archetype from Xanathar's Guide to Everything. Which is not in the player's handbook. It's one of the yes. expansion books. But it's a different archetype for the rogue that you chose to go with. I did, and I'll be totally honest with you, which maybe this is really bad, but I didn't actually read it. I just read the title, and the title said uh, Inquisitive Rogue, and I thought, Sinedra is curious. She's very inquisitive. I'm obviously this type of rogue, and I just chose it right then and there. I was like, yep, I'm an inquisitive rogue. And it's perfect. And it worked out really well. Yeah, it's really good. There are a few things that are really nice that you already have available. Just so you know, we're going to start these characters at level 8 in the campaign. So some of this stuff you wouldn't have from the get-go, but at this point at level 8, she's going to have access to them. One of the things is eye for detail. Yes, the eye for detail is um, the ability to... Um, Hang on, ask me again. You get the bonus action to essentially find a, like a hidden person or a hidden creature, or you can use it to get uh, the discovery of a clue. Y'all, you, I've heard been that watching, you really needed me to have that ability. We we need clues. I've heard you really needed yeah. me to be able to find. Said we clue. we might need help with finding clues. Yes. Maybe. So, I've got a leg up on the finding of the clues. Thank God. Maybe that's why they wrote me in. We'll find out. We'll, we'll see. Another one is Ear for Deceit. Yeah, Ear for Deceit I really like. So, Ear for Deceit is an ability where essentially if I am trying to figure out, roll to see if I successfully find out if someone is lying, it basically gives me an advantage. So, I'm much more likely to know whether or not they are actually lying. Right. Which I think is going to be super advantageous for for Sinedra's perspective as someone who wants knowledge, because if she's trying to get knowledge out of somebody that they don't necessarily want to readily give up, she will know if she's being lied to. So uh, those of you who have watched, we need that too. Because <laughs> we, we're MVP. Clueless. It's going to be me. It's ridiculous. As an inquisitive rogue, the last thing that I have uh, is insightful fighting yeah that's awesome which is really cool so i can use insightful fighting as um, a bonus action to essentially roll to like figure out their fighting style and if i am successful then i can use sneak attack without disadvantage and i don't have to have an ally nearby and i can still use sneak attack super useful super useful I will say the one thing about these to keep in mind is most of these abilities do take a bonus action. Remember that you only have one bonus action per turn. So if you use a bonus action for your cunning action, you can't use a bonus action for the insightful fighting and vice versa. So there is going to be a little bit of chess play going on. It's like, when do I use which, which one? Yeah. So the way that I'm looking at it is sort of like the um, inquisitive rogue essentially gives me, instead of having three options for my cunning action bonus move, I have like six options. Nice. is kind of how I'm looking at it, just to make sure that I don't accidentally try and double dip, and then there you are, y'all are watching me look like a moron. That's gonna happen. But if we can minimize it, that would be great. 
A minute ago, I talked about just how all of this kind of defines your character. How exactly does all of this fit with Sinedra? Because Sinedra had to kind of grow up on her own and had to sort of teach herself how to function and how to survive, and because she's constantly driven by this desire for knowledge, 100% driven by this curiosity, um, I wanted her to be able to acquire it in multiple ways. Um, whether that was stealing from somebody or talking somebody out of something, like I said. So one of the ways that she has learned to be very proficient in this is um, pickpocketing. And to the point that I would say she is probably a compulsive pickpocketer. Ooh. She, that was one of the reasons that I chose the sleight of hand is I wanted her to be really good at pickpocketing people and to be able to get away with it. I would dare say 90% of the time because she may or may not pickpocket someone that she really shouldn't. She may or may not pickpocket someone who may be in her party. That's what I thought was coming. That's what I thought was coming. She may or may not pickpocket just because she's curious to see if she can get away with it. I'm sure there will be plenty of opportunities to see how that plays out when she picks the pocket of the dragonborn sitting across from her. I mean, if I she mean, never knows. Drama, y'all. Drama. It's gonna be great. Through all of this, there's one other thing I want to get into before we go crazy with all of our rolling of stats. Uh, picking gear and things like that. Have you picked your gear? Do you know what all you've got? Yes, at least I think I do. Well, okay, so what do you got for armor? Uh, so I've got le light leather armor. Let's write that over there. Light leather armor. Light le Say is, that five times fast while I write a, this down. Is there a heavy? I don't think there's a heavy leather armor. It might well, I don't care. Say armor. it five times light fast. Light leather armor, light leather armor, light leather armor, light leather armor, light leather armor. I mean, not bad. Almost got it. You did all right. So that makes sense. Rogue leather armor makes sense. What about weapons? Um, so I have two daggers. Two daggers. Which I love, and they may or may not have a very interesting story behind them. Guess you'll have to find out. Oh. I have a rapier. Rapier. So think like Puss in Boots. It's kind of what I was envisioning. Um, I have a short bow. Short bow. So that way, in case you know, long range attacks don't always want to be up in the fray. And then, of course, as we briefly mentioned before, my absolute favorite, the claws. Because the advantage of being a cat is I'm never unarmed. Or a tabaxi cat creature. I'm never unarmed. I kind of love that. Because there have been plenty of times when I've wanted to just, like, bust out. And, I mean, I have... Well, what I really like about it is even with, like, a critical fail, like, I can't... I have had moments where I like go to swing my sword and it like flies off behind me. My claws can't. That's not a thing. You're right. You're not losing your claws. They're always going to be there, which I think is going to be highly useful. Probably so. And then I also have, just as a little tidbit, this is, I guess, counts of equipment. Um, I have a little leather journal that I keep with Ooh. me that I write little tidbits about things that I've learned in there. And then the last little piece of something that I carry with me, again, not necessarily, it's not a weapon, but it is something I carry with me at all times, would be a um, nightcap that was my mother's that gives me sweet dreams. Yeah. Why do I need a magical hat that gives me sweet dreams? intrigue and nightcaps on cats. All right, let's get into the numbers because there's a lot of numbers involved in all this stuff. We already rolled all of the things because we didn't want to sit here and roll it all out at the beginning. As much fun as that would be for you. Sure. So we already rolled all the things. I wrote them down Proud because I want to make sure, thanks. I want to make sure that everybody knows exactly what we rolled. None of this like, oh, you didn't get those numbers. No, this is, this is what we rolled here. Uh, there are a few ways that you and can get... And we have get, witnesses. We do. There were a bunch of us there. There are a few ways that you can get your scores. You can do a point by system. You can just use the regular generic scores. Or you can roll dice. We're rolling the dice. The way you do that is you take four six-sided die, roll them, take out the lowest number, keep the top three, add them up, there's a score. Do that six times, fill in your grid. So the first time you rolled, you got a five, three... Three, two. Nobody needs a two. And that's going to leave you with 11. It is. Live you. It lives you with 11. Notice he's doing the math. It might Fun actually... fact about Kelsey the human. I'm really not good with numbers, so I'll be that person that I'll roll something and be like, Mark, what is math? You wouldn't be the first, honestly. It's okay, though. I am all. allowed to have other skills. This is not one of them. <laughs> Five, four, two, one. Nobody likes a one. one. Still an 11. Not bad Not so far. Not too shabby. How about 6324? 
equally not shabby. Not too bad at all. Losing the two, though. Gives you a 13. Dang. How about 6351? How about it? Get rid of that one, though. For that's, sure. That's lame. And that's going to give you 14. Mm-hmm. Then we've got 6621. Losing the one. Lowest number. Gotta Guess go. What? 14. Last one, six, four, five, two. So here's a little tidbit. Get rid of the two because it's the lowest. 15, right? 15, yep. Yep, look at me in my math. Wow, I'm so proud. Thanks. So here's a little tidbit about me. I always choose rolling. I know that it's not the only option, but I always choose rolling. And what I have discovered is if I pick my character first and I'm very character focused, every single time that I have chosen to roll, it has worked out in my favor. It also could be because my dice are better than yours. I mean... Tidbit. I, mean, I had to borrow three of his dice because I only have one set. There's only one D6 in there. So he handed me four dice and I went, no, no, no. I have to have at least one of my own dice because I picked them out. They are my die. So I removed one of his, put mine in there, and every single time, this lowest number was never my dice. Pick your dice wisely. My, my, my dice are... We got numbers, and they're good numbers, but now we got to put them into the grid and figure out what's going to happen. With a rogue, you want your best number to go with your dexterity. Rogues are all about dexterity. So I'll put the 15 there plus the 2. That math I can do. Now, the rest of it, though, is really just kind of depends on your character and how you want to play your character. So, I mean, so, how are you going to do this? I wanted her to be able to talk her way out of things, like I had said before. So, and I, since I have this modifier, I went ahead and put a 14 with charisma. Adding my modifier made it 15. Sweet. That's totally legible. Totally a five, y'all. That's a five. Totally a five. Five. I don't know if that made it better or worse. You let us know if that made it better or worse. In the comments below. Um, and then after that, I went ahead and did an 11 on strength because I figured cats aren't typically the strongest creatures and also she should be able to just jump out of the way of whatever she needs or backflip away from it. So I figured having my lowest thing be strength, but 11's still not. No, it's not bad. That's above average. Completely is above shabby. Average. Um, so constitution, I know is important, you know, for not dying. So I made that my next highest because I like not dying. I may have nine lives, but that doesn't mean I want to use all of them. Uh, the next thing I chose intelligence. I wanted it to be 13 because, um, a stupid rogue is a dead rogue. Oh, that's nice. I like that. Thank you. Yeah. And then wisdom 11 because, um, curiosity killed the cat and in pursuing her curiosity she quite often foregoes wisdom even the wisdom of self-preservation i saw a video on youtube the other day where there was a little house cat in an animal preserve taking on a lion i would totally believe it 100 <laughs> percent believe that it's like what are you doing it's a lion that would be that would be sinedra right then and there being like i have to know are his teeth as big as they say they are that would be sinedra so once you get everything down with your abilities, that's going to give you bonuses that are going to affect all of your skill checks, all of your ability checks, everything like that. So if we go in here, a strength with 11 is going to be a plus zero. So you're not getting a big bonus on that. But, that but you're also not getting a negative. True. Because that is an option. I might have a negative on my character. 17 is kind of awesome. That's going to be a plus three. 14 is not bad. That's going to be a plus two, I believe. Mm -hmm. Boom. Uh, 13 is going to give you a plus one. The 11 wisdom is not going to do a lot for you. That's going to be a plus zero. But again, not negative. Could be worse. Not negative. And a 15 for charisma is not bad either. That's going to be a plus two as well. Not bad. These are actually, that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good spread right there. It's a there, decent spread. Honestly. The way this plays into your skills and all of your abilities is that everything you have over here is based off of one of these six abilities. The proficiency bonus for level eight is three. Because we fancy. We so fancy. So all you have to do is take that proficiency bonus plus your bonus on the dexterity and make that into a plus six. See how that works? Keep in mind, if you don't have proficiency, you just take the raw modifier. Like strength is gonna be a plus zero. Constitution is gonna be a plus two. That's a decent two. Mm -hmm. Intelligence is gonna be a plus four. Because one plus three, that math I can do. See how that works? You're just going to work your way all the way down through here. There's another thing that comes into play here. The constitution bonus is going to go into your hit points as well. At level one, 
you're going to take the maximum of your die, which in this case was a D8, and add your constitution bonus. So at level one, you're going to have 10 hit points. But wait! We're level eight! What? When you level up, you actually have two choices for how you get your hit points. You can take the average, which I think for D8 is five. Or you can roll. Which of course, because my dice are great, well, I rolled. It started off really rough. Really bad. So your first roll was a one. Which was really sad. Right. And I was concerned. Keep in mind that you're adding the constitution bonus of two, so that actually equaled a three. So at level two, she was going to have 13 hit points. Make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Makes sense. It's not a good number, but it makes sense. True. Your next roll was a was two. A two. So I was looking like a very weak cat. I got you up to 17. It did. Which, you know, we're, we're making progress. Ish. Now your next one was exciting though, because that and was then a I six. Had a, give, then I gave my dice a firm talking to. It's true. I saw it. It was, I mean, not, not for the family to watch. It's somewhat aggressive. That six with the two for the constitution gave you eight. That bumped you up to 25. Now that's reasonable. That's, that's getting reasonable. That's tolerable. But wait. <laughs> How about a one then again? I went back to a one. For another three, which brought you up to 28. 28. Still, now we're seeing how this works. I had hope for the future. Did you? I did. Because your next roll was an eight. It just, let's just skip ahead. Your next roll was an eight. Oh, wait. Your next roll was an eight. So she went from this to suddenly bumping up to 58 hit points. Wow. That was huge. Cat's got nine lives. Clearly. <laughs> I am looking at those numbers, remembering how I rolled, and I'm just, oh, I'm so jealous. I'm so jealous, y'all. A couple other things we have to figure out. The initiative. So the initiative is when you're in combat, you're going to have to roll to see who goes first in combat. Your initiative is nothing more than a dexterity check. So you're going to look at what your dexterity score is, and you're going to have a plus three on your initiative. Cool, huh? So you have leather armor, which is a base of 11. Yes. You're going to take whatever value you have for the armor that you're making. You're going to add your dexterity. In this case, the 11 plus 3 gives you an armor class of 14. Armor class 14, hit points 58, efficiency bonus plus 3, initiative plus 3, speed of 30. You don't have any spells, so we don't need to worry about spells. You don't. I can climb, though. You can climb, that's true. The other thing we need to talk about is combat and how all of these weapons are going to come to play in combat. In combat, there are two options. You can either have a weapon that requires strength or a weapon that requires dexterity. Some of them may give you the option. You could choose strength or dexterity. For a dagger, you can use that with dexterity. With a dexterity modifier, you're going to have plus three, but you're proficient in daggers. So what does that make it? Plus six. Plus six modifier. So it is advantage or advantageous to pay attention to the things that you're proficient in, right? Because well, then yeah. you could buy, maybe intentionally choose those things. Right. I mean, you could. Which I don't think counts as min-maxing. I think that at that point counts as like wise decision making. Yeah, exactly. If I'm out in the woods and I know how to use a dagger, I'm going to use a dagger. The dagger as opposed to a flamethrower. If yes. you don't know how to use one. I don't know how to use a flamethrower. Great thrower. weapon, but if you don't know. I don't know. You can light yourself on fire. I would probably do that. Which would be bad. I would, it would be bad. Unless it was on YouTube and then we would all watch and then it would be funny. Okay, so it would be funny for the rest of us. Damage on a dagger is a D4. So we're just going to do a D4. For the damage, you also get to add the modifier for that skill. So it's a D4 plus three for dexterity. You don't add the proficiency bonus for the damage, y'all. Don't add the proficiency bonus. Don't add the proficiency bonus for the damage. A rapier is considered a finesse weapon. That's a weapon that you can use either strength or dexterity for your modifier. I'm assuming you're using I chose dexterity. Yeah. And you could switch. Because strength was one of the options that I right. chose to be weaker in. I mean, there may be a Pun situation, you never know, where maybe your strength is a better choice and you can switch with a finesse weapon. You can be like, no, 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 I'm going to use strength. But most of the time, it's going to be a plus six for your dexterity. Also does more damage. That's a D8? Yes, it is a D8. It is a D8. So that's going to be a D8 plus your dexterity modifier three. 
Ranged weapons take dexterity as their modifier. So for a short bow, guess what? We're back here at plus six. Because again, I'm actually proficient in all three of those things. All three of these things. Short bow has a D6 for damage. So that's gonna be a D6 plus three. Talk to me about your claws though. So my claws, which are a slash damage, I they are mine, so I am technically proficient in them. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, and so they are not as much damage. Uh, they're a d4, but I still get my proficiency bonus, so it is still a plus six. And you also get your plus three. Dexterity yes. plus three. So I mean, you have a lot of options for making things bloody. Yes, and I, like I said, I did actively choose my weapons around what I knew my strength to be, which to me, like I said, seems like something that a very logical person would do. Fair enough, yeah. There's one other thing we need to talk about uh, just specifically for this. Now notice we're at level eight right now, but there's something that we haven't discussed. There are a few points when you level up where you have the option to increase some of your ability scores. You can either increase one ability score by two, you can increase two ability scores by one, or you can choose to take a feat. I believe you took some feats. I did. What I are your feats? did. I took a uh, keen mind, okay. which basically it seemed like a very cat thing for me. It let me know um, I always know which way is north. I always know how many hours until sunset and sunrise, which seemed like a very cat like so thing cat. to me. So cat. Oh, and I can also remember anything that I have seen or heard within the past month. Y'all, that's huge. Again, finding clues, remembering crap. But it made sense. The reason I chose it again was character driven. It made sense that she would have developed the ability to remember the knowledge that she sure. so passionately pursues. Love it. Love it a lot. Love it a lot. Love it a lot. But I chose another feat. Um, I also went with sharpshooter. Ooh, I was not expecting sharpshooter. Well, I figured that at some point in time, she probably had to take something from somebody that was bigger and better than her. So it seemed like a useful ability because I do have that short bow, which is a long range weapon. Right. And those two things play in together. So what does sharpshooter do for I don't you? remember, hang on. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, so if somebody oh. is like hiding and they're only 50% or 75% hidden, I can still hit them. That's nice. That's, That's what nice. that was. Oh, I almost forgot. Uh, there's something really important about rogues that we can't ignore. There's also the expertise part of being rogue. At level one, you can choose two skills and double your proficiency bonus. And at level six, you get two more. So since we're starting off at level eight, you're gonna have four skills that you have a double proficiency bonus in. What are the skills that you chose? So I chose sleight of hand. I wanted to be an expert at sleight of hand for obvious pickpocketing purposes. Makes sense. Wait, before we go farther, let me explain how that works. Because sleight of hand is a dexterity based skill. So I'm gonna take three plus her proficiency the expertise doubles that, so it's going to be three plus six. So sleight of hand has a plus nine. It's a nine-ish. I believe you that it's a nine. Uh, the other one I chose, or the next one I chose, I guess, is stealth. Same thing, another dexterity based. Mm -hmm. Again, nine. sort of goes along with the pickpocketing compulsive thing. I need to be really good at it if it's a compulsory I mean, true, issue. True. Um, the next one that I chose was insight. Okay. I went with the cat instincts. On that one. That makes sense and that will actually help because insight you have a zero modifier so doubling up your proficiency moves that up to a plus six. And then the last one that I chose was acrobatics um, because I thought it would make for more fun gameplay if I can maybe get away with like backflipping off walls and stuff. Yeah I think you definitely will and that's a plus nine as well. Dexterity plus your double proficiency bonus is a plus nine. So that's damn you had some skills. I'm hoping to have fun with them. I, I have a feeling that you're going to have plenty of opportunity to have fun with these. That mischievous character that everyone loves and hates at the same time. All right, so there we have it. After all of this, we have ended up with Sinedra Woodstream, the Tabaxi Rogue, the newest member of the Heroes of Awesome that's going to be joining the Rusted Heart campaign that's starting on Twitch May 6, 2018. We'll also have them on YouTube, so you can watch them on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe. Leave a like on your way out. She's good at this. Kelsey, welcome to the family. Yeah. We should do a freeze frame, like an 80s freeze frame. Kelsey, welcome to the family.